welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I'm very excited about what we're going to learn today. But first of all, I just want to welcome you all from your various destinations that you're at, from your wonderful homes. Um, there's Coco, Roxanne, Kim, Melanie, Paula, and Steve and Norma. Thank you and welcome for welcome and thank you for joining me today. Boy, I'm a little tongue-tied. I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of learning, and we're gonna jump in and talk about the pre-registration for the spring fling that's coming up in April. And let's jump to the website and talk about how you can pre-register to win a 16X Elite machine and a Q-Zone hoop frame. Um, so I want you to go to the website right now, if you can, and pre-register to win. So you'll go to the website, graceframe.com. You'll find the events at the top of the screen, click on it, and then you'll scroll down to the Spring Fling. Click on that, and then you'll see Spring Fling Quilt Festival, the dates that it's gonna be starting. Then you'll see the workshops, giveaways, the sales event, the parade of quilts. So make sure that you enter your quilts. Um, and then it'll, where do, where do you go to pre-register? It's up there. at. Towards the top, it says register, okay? So we want you to register right here for the spring fling. And then once you've registered, then you can save all those dates. Oh God, there's so many wonderful, talented quilters out there that are gonna share their love of quilting with you during the spring fling. We have a lot going on here. And so make sure that you register to win that wonderful machine and that frame. And so just click on it and register to enter on that one. Then oh, let's pull it up and let me, I have, to, I have to specifically tell you a few things about the pre-registration. So if you'll bring up that document, then I can read that. He's trying to find it. So anyway, I'll just fill in time. You know, I'm me, I can go on all day about quilting. So I could keep you here all day and all night but I won't do that to you today. <laughs> it went away, the whole thing? Okay. All right, the document's gone, but just get the gist of it and make sure that you are registered to win and make sure you're selecting all the little workshops that you want to sign up for and then then sign up to enter your beautiful quilts. And Melanie, thank you for registering. I really appreciate it. It's not hard to do, but then you'll know. Oh, we found it. All right, so I'm supposed to announce the pre-registration, which I've already done about 15 times now. Are you counting? All right, then the kickoff is April 6th through the 11th, okay? So that's when they're going to start. Oh, 6th at 11 a.m., sorry. <laughs> Read the whole sentence, Carla. Okay, and when and that's when they'll announce the winner of the pre-registration. So that is April 6th at 11 a.m. So if you want to be live with us and hear your name, call. Please join us April 6th at 11 a.m. All right, that's done and we've got that out of the way. And make sure that you're following us on our Facebook page. Sign up for the Home Base Quilter page. Wow, if you haven't signed up for that, please do because there's so many fabulous quilters out there. Um, and we want you to be a part of the Home Base Quilter website, Facebook page, everything that's going on so you don't miss a thing. So that's another area that you can join a community of wonderful quilters who know so much about quilting and some that are just wow. getting started. And so they need help from all of us who've been doing it for a while. So please head over to there. And if you have a hard time, just go to our main website, graceframe.com, look at the events, see what's going on, and you'll find out what's going on with Tuesdays with Grace and what festivals we have going on, and we'll try to keep you going. All right, so I filled your time up with a lot of nonsense here. <laughs> so let's jump in and talk about um, the little quilt that we are working on for I Rule with Rulers, okay? That's the name of this whole month. We're going to learn how to use rulers correctly, learn how to adjust our frame and our machine for the settings so it's more comfortable. And I want you to try and dabble and stick your foot in the water of 
of using ruler work to um, quilt because it actually is such a fun way to add embellishments or enhance your quilt and make it look like, man, you're so professional and we're really not. So let's jump in and talk about a Y seam, okay? On this cute quilt, um, I have given you a Y seam and you say, why? Carla, would you ever do that? Because some of us have a hard time with white seams. I just did it for me because I really do have a harder time with white seams and I felt like it was time for me to become more of an expert in doing them. So I have a little video that I put together to show you how I did it. Now, there are a lot of great videos on YouTube. Please explore your options and find what works best for you. So here I am, I've sewed it so these two pieces together, okay? And now I'm going to sew my white piece in, okay? And I'm just showing you what I did. I folded it up so I had a little crease for my measurements, okay? And Brenda says, yikes, I'm having problems with, um, the what is it? Computer. The computer today, okay? <laughs> Afternoon, hi, hi. And then I'm just showing you how, what I did to make my wicing work, okay? So I sewed down to my crease and I stopped, I cut my threads, then I opened it up and I put the fold together again and I brought the other piece up. Okay, notice how I have it, I stopped sewing before I got to the bottom of this. And now I'm gonna go down where the fold is and now you could put a pin there if you wanted to. Just find what works best for you. And then I opened it up and I was able to sew down and my Y seams really worked. After a couple tries, I have to confess. <laughs> when I was doing this quilt, man, I was so slick. I did so well. Then I had Brian sitting there <laughs> filming me and man, I screwed it up <laughs> so many times. So even Carla makes mistakes and I wanted to have you be my confession people. So now you know. This one was the one that worked out. <laughs> what are Y seams? Okay, I'll show you. Okay, a Y seam is when you have two pieces, two, two pieces that you've sewn together, okay? And you want to insert a block that doesn't have a seam going down it. All right, so this air, let me show you, is a Y seam. It's right here, right here, and down here. Okay, that's your Y. And I inserted this triangle block. See how nicely it lays? So it's actually doable, it's not that hard, and this is a really easy quilt to try and dabble in a Y seam. And really, I would like for you to try it, and this is just one more thing that you can put in and not be afraid of as you're quilting. So it just will really enhance your quilts because we won't have a seam down here um, in our, our triangle, it's just one smooth seam. Now I could have eliminated this and done a seam and had you sew all the way down, but I, want, I didn't want to. I wanted to learn something as well, and these aren't that scary to try. So, hopefully you can do it really well, or there's always paper piecing as your backup, okay? So try the paper, try the Y seam first. If you're having trouble, then go to the paper piecing. Paper piecing is really easy. All right, so that's done. So let's talk about Okay, I'm using a little bit different batting today. Um, it's a little thicker. Oh, it's so soft and so nice. It's a, actually a bamboo batting, and it's a little heavier, loft, not heavier, because it seems lighter, but it's just a little loftier. Um, and so that's what I'm using. Um, it's from Windline, and I'm really thinking I'm gonna like it. I was going to do a double layer, because you know I like double layers, but this was, so much thicker that we're just trying one layer today. I may change it up and decide that I want two layers because when you're doing ruler work, you want it to be a little puffier, but not too puffy. Um, and so to show off the ruler work, so you want it to stand out. So that's why I'm using this uh, batting. It's brand new to me. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna like it, but I'm very excited to try and use it. All right, so. Here we go, let's talk about setting up our frame and our machine for ruler work, okay? 
So I felt like this was really important because when we pulled this frame in here and I saw the angle of the handles and the, the depth of the quilt that I was going to be using, I thought, man, are my short arms going to be able to handle that? And I want it to be very comfortable. So at the name of the batting, I will find out the name and I will write it down on the website for you. Um, it's Like I said, it's from Windline. It is a bamboo batting, um, but I'm not quite sure. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm using a 21 inch machine and I want you to notice that it is a very long machine. So I won't have a hard time reaching my designs when I get to this point here, but moving back here and holding my ruler, it might be tough. So I might want to adjust this pole right here in just a little bit so it's more comfortable for me standing at my machine. And notice how low these handles are right here. Now, I don't have to probably adjust them up, but I'm going to. Um, so I'm just going to go around the back because this is set up for different people and we use it all the time. So just ignore me as I go around the back, and I'm just going to adjust it up just a little bit. So I'm using my M4 Allen wrench. I'm inserting it into this, this screw right back here, and I'm just going to adjust it up so that I'm not standing. As you'll feel the ruler work in, your small, in the small of your back and your shoulders. And I'm just going to lift it up just a slightly and then retighten it, because I don't want the handles to move up or down on me. Okay, so I tightened it up and notice right here I extended the handles as well. So most of our handles now extend out. Now our 15 it did not but it was more upright. Okay, so notice how far my reach is. That's very uncomfortable and I know it's going to be really hard for me to hold my ruler nice and stable. So I want to change the position of this pole here. And this is our new evolution frame. So right here to adjust this pole, we have this set screw right here. No, which one is it? No, that one's for this up, up here, so I want to adjust that. So yes, that's the right one. This one down here is for the up and down. It's a new frame for me, so bear with me. <laughs> and then I'll make my adjustments going in. So I'm coming down here, and I just want to push it in. And notice I haven't, and I just want to push it in. I haven't attached the clamps yet. And I think I'm going to pull it in all the way. OK, because I want it to be comfortable. I'm about a quarter of an inch, and, and I have the bungee clamps there. OK, there, I'm going to tighten it back up. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Okay. Because I don't want it moving back and forth on me as I'm rolling it up. Okay. That looks pretty good. Yep. There we go. And I'm just going to tighten this up as well. Okay. An easy adjustment. I just wanted you to see that. And so now. This is a little more comfortable and I'm able to reach it. So make your adjustments necessary, okay? And that's why I wanted to stop and show you that because I felt like, oh, wow, how am I going to do that? Now, I would use the pink clips on this because this is a little thicker batting um, and it will just really hold very nicely and I can remove them on and off very easy. So I will get some pink clips and then I want you to notice our new ruler bases, okay? Notice right here that they have an extra couple of inches right here so it looks a little wider in this area. I love that, okay? So as we're moving forward, okay? Thank you, Madison. <laughs> Behind the scenes, the magic of quilting. Okay, and I'm just gonna tighten it up. Okay, my frame is not level because we pull it in and out, but having a level frame for free motion and ruler work, extremely important. 
So make sure you are leveling your frame. And even if it's been sitting for a while, have you ever heard of a house, house settling? So as your house settles, <laughs> so will your frame. And over time, you're going to have to readjust it because you're using it back and forth. So make sure you're making those adjustments. And I'm not saying that you have to do it every time you quilt. No, don't do that. Make sure that when you do maybe a, a spring cleaning and a fall cleaning, that you go through and adjust your frame your machine and everything and get them all perky and happy and and clean those as well really really well so okay I got all my stuff together and I have my frame I have my ruler base on and notice that I will hit the front of it and it's going to go up over the pole and now I don't want that to happen so I would probably adjust this pull up just a little bit but I'm not going to take time to do that right now and make sure that there's enough space right back here for your machine to move real freely, okay? So those are the adjustments that we need to make. Now I want to talk to you about designs, okay? So I have all my things here and the proper feet and how easy it is to change your feet out for ruler work. All right, so usually I will go and get my two Allen wrenches that I use all the time. So actually I'll have three tools that I have out whenever I'm quilting. I'll have my flat headed screwdriver, which is really good for changing the needles out. I will have my three millimeter whatever color it is, we have a tendency to change colors around here, and then my four millimeter. This helps me change most of the, have most of the adjustments with the screws that I need on the frame and my wheels or anything going on like that. This one here is to adjust the foot and some other adjustments that you may need with this size, okay? This foot height gauge, extremely important for you to keep out at all times. So if you're thinking, God, where the heck am I going to put this thing? All right, I want you to pull your machine over and put it right here. And so it's on the <laughs> bottom of the bottom carriage. So it's just sitting right there so you can grab it anytime you need it. So these tools can be your little collection where you have all these nice little tools. They're not going to bother anything or anybody by sitting right there, but you'll have them at your fingertips and you're going to be able to reach in and use them anytime. This is also where I will keep my extra bobbins that I have wound. Um, it's just a good place that I know it's so I could just reach down under and pull things out and grab. Okay. Now let's talk about the template that I put on the website this week. All right. The template is just an outline of the quilt. And this is really important for you as you're deciding what designs that you want to put on the quilt. And um, maybe I'll pull it in closer. There you go. So now you can see the outline of it. This is for you to print off several pages and start, okay, and start using your rulers. This is a great way to learn how the rulers um, will react to your positioning them on the quilt and then where you want to start and where you want to stop. It's just a great way to learn how the rulers will work. And this is one that I started using um, that I just printed off a copy of the colored so I could see what was going on. Now we're probably not going to use all of these designs as I'm quilting, but they're ideas and fun ways to interact using rulers um, as you're quilting. So I just did a design down here. So I used my points of my blocks to help me align and do some ideas and making some squares. All right, so they're not perfect. It doesn't have to be, but when it'll help you when you get to your, your actual quilt as you're quilting, learn what you need to do and the angles and what points you need to do. Because the same thing is true as you're using the pencil as if you're using the needle as your point and your foot on your ruler. So they react the same way and it's a great way to learn. All right, so as we're quilting, we are going to be using um, the slice ruler right here. We're going to use this in the border. And I thought this was a really fun ruler. It's a Leah Day ruler. She designed this and we made it for her and we are selling this. So this is one that I don't think a lot of um, 
a lot of quilters know how to use because it's kind of a wedgy design and it's like how can I implement that in my quilting and so I thought it'd be really fun to show you how cool this ruler is and what you can actually do with it to really enhance your quilt all right so notice that it doesn't have any true grips on it so it's really slick so I'm going to apply some true grips I'm also going to use my little three by eight ruler my true cut ruler what's nice about this ruler here is that you have your eighth and your quarter inch markings on it so you can get really nice and accurate as you are drawing your designs and also making your adjustments so make sure you get a little ruler like that if you don't have this and you're not a, a three by 18 inch ruler by true cut and you just cut it off to the size that you want it awesome 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 because our rulers have the edge and notice how nice and flat they sit they have the holes also to help you hold and also to help you mark so this is a fabulous ruler and if you don't have one you really need one all right then I'm also using <laughs> my nine inch. You could use the nine or the six inch ruler, um, but I'm using the nine today because it was the one that was handy and it really helped me mark. And I will show you how I did the markings on the quilt. So today we're going to do some of the markings on the border and then I'm gonna jump in and show you how to stitch in the ditch to stabilize. All right, so let me pull some of these out of the way. And I want to make sure my area is clear so I'm not hitting anything. And then here's the ditcher ruler, okay? On the ditcher ruler, I'll pull this up a little closer, okay? Notice that we have quarter inch lines on one side and then we start getting smaller on the other. That's so that you can kind of echo and do different sizes of lines. So this is a really great one to have. And notice that it's got a little curve for, um, for the foot to come and catch so you can get really in there and really make your points nice and sharp and not overstitch. So a lot of stitching lines to help you keep the ruler in place and not overstitch onto an area that you don't want a little stitch because you know what, we have a good eraser and it's called unpicking and I don't like to unpick. so. <laughs> I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I put my true grips on them. I have a nice new package here on all of these to stabilize them and hold them into place. Um, but for marking, okay, this is the big, probably the biggest question I'm always asked, what do I mark with? Well, I have used a lot of marking tools in my day and some of them don't come out. And I have found that a number two or a number three um, pencil is probably my favorite one to use and that's because I can erase the lines and the lines are fine enough and thin enough that if I'm sewing over them and nice and straight that it's going to be hidden okay with my stitching so this is what I like to use use what you like to use this is your time to experiment and understand how these work I've had I've gone to a lot of classes and taken a lot of courses in quilting. And most of them say that they like the washable washout um, pins, or they like the chalk, or they like the ones that you can um, use the iron over. Okay, but they all have a stipulation. They always say, try it first. And then they always come back and say, well, on this one quilt, it didn't come all the way out. So if it's not coming all the way out and they're hesitant about it working on every quilt out there, I'm hesitant too. And I don't want to use it because I've already tried it on a couple of quilts and it doesn't come out like they say it does. But this pencil, I can erase it and it works really well. So that's what I'm using. And so you use what you like to use and what you're comfortable with. I'm just here to make some suggestions and have some things that I think about and I've learned from. And then I'm passing that wisdom on to you and you can take it and use it or you, you don't have to. I don't care. So either one. All right. So let's jump in and talk about feet here. Okay. So right now I have my standard foot on and it's not hard to change the feet. Okay, 
don't be stuck. And if you put the ruler foot on, don't keep it on, please. There's so many ways to use the feet and they're, use them how they're intended and you'll have much better success. So today we're gonna try a different foot and it's called the open toe. It works with our rulers. So if you have a Kinique, on that, if you have another brand of machine, I don't know how your open toe will work with um, your rulers and things. So I wouldn't say try it, but I've already tried this. So I know it's proven on the Kinique machines that it will work, okay? And actually the reason I like the open toe is I can see the needle better. So I can make sure that the needle is staying on the lines and my ruler is positioned correctly. So let's quickly change the foot. And what I, I told you where to put the height foot gauge and I forgot where I told you to put it. So, so let's take it off and we're going to use our height foot gauge and my three millimeter um, Allen wrench and then we're just gonna talk about stitching in the ditch and marking. I told you I had a lot to talk about today um, for setting it up. But next week, we're gonna really get down to starting to learn what the tools can do and how to position them. And I'm gonna show you how to quilt with them. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit today. So I'm gonna put this foot down underneath so that I have it so I can put it right back. But I'm gonna put my open toe on, it's right here. And I'm going to just put it on right here and I'm gonna hold it down, okay? And I'm going to just barely start screwing this in. All right, so with this, I want to make sure that the needle is the lowest position closest to um, the hook. So I wanna put the needle down, okay? And now it's in the correct position. I'm gonna slide my height foot gauge underneath it and notice what I'm doing. I'm putting the little groove of the height foot gauge around the needle and it's heightened it just right and I can screw it into place. All right, and now I can bring my needle up. I'm good to go. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Dry air in Utah, and I'll tell you, it gets a little tough here when you're talking constantly. All right, so I wanna put my tools back. I'm just gonna come here and I want you to see how well this works with the rulers as I'm marking my quilts. So see where you can see the position of the needle so you can keep it right on? It really does work really well. So I'm gonna just use this as <clears throat> the stitch in the ditch. And I'm going to just show you a little bit how it works, but let me put my true grips on it because the true grips will really help me stabilize so that I don't have to hold it down quite as much. Okay. And so if you don't have true grips, please. All right, so Paula's asking. Okay. Paula Beck, Becker is asking, is that because the Cunique open toe is taller? I noticed that it was when I got mine. Yes, that is because it is a little bit taller shank on it and I can use it with the ruler behind as well. So notice that and notice this and how well it works with our rulers as you're guiding it. So that's why I like the open toe. I don't know how some of the others are made, but I specifically asked them to make it a little taller. Um, and I could use it with these rulers, but I really like it with our true cuts. So notice how that works and how you can see when you're stitching in the ditch, how it's going to work. So you can bring it all the way to the end and have it stop. All right, so let me put some true grips on these and I won't spend a lot of time doing that because I want to show you how nicely it works. And then one thing I want to tell you um, as well is lots of times we'll put um, the true grips right here where we want them, but put the, use the little teeny dots for right here in the corners so that we don't have to press down so hard on it. The little teeny dots just give you that added little extra 
grip that you need as you're moving across your quilt, especially on your long ruler where you have a tendency to slide. If you'll put those little dots right there on the very tippy corners, the top and the bottom, they will really help stabilize your ruler as you're cutting and as you're using them to quilt with, okay? So make sure you're doing that. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you a couple of little things, okay? So let me show you a couple of ways. Now, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of you are probably asking, well, why do you stitch in the ditch, okay? Um, stitch in the ditch just helps to stabilize your block. I noticed that as I was using bamboo batting, the bamboo batting is a little sick, slicker, and it, my, my quilt had a tendency to move on it, um, and I didn't like that. So I decided that I needed to go around and stabilize each block, and I don't have to use that color of thread. I can just, if I'm good enough in the ditch, I can just use the thread that I want to quilt with, but you just have to be really careful. And, you know, this is your quilt to practice on. And we may not be perfect at first, because we're going to learn a lot, but I'm going to bring up my thread well, I'm going to hope to bring up my thread. All right, so now I'm going to see what's going on because I know it's probably caught down underneath or it's too short to bring up, okay? So I'm going to just make it a little longer. I want to make sure that I'm bringing it up and notice I heard the snap. And I'm just going to show you this one and I'm going to let you go and then I'm going to let you join me next week as we get into more of the details of I rule so we can rule the rulers, and notice how I'm aligning this right there on the edge, and I just want to bring up, all right, there's my thread. Notice how I'm holding on to it and bringing it up, and it's a great thread, and I just want to make sure that I'm stitching in the ditch, and I'm just going to show you one, and then next week I'm going to get more involved in the quilting. So. Okay, here's the other thing. A lot of people have different, a lot of quilters have different ways of um, tying off the stitch. Um, I've learned that going back and forward is one way that they have, or going forward and then back to secure it so it just looks like one continuous stitch. Then some will do several single stitches. That on ruler work, um, I learned the hard way is a buildup of the thread. So I kind of like doing a couple of stitches, and then moving back just a couple, and then coming forward. And that secured my stitch, okay? And then I'm just going to go down and just stay. And I'm, actually, I'm going to get better as we go along. Okay, so now I'm to the end, but I didn't secure the stitch, so I want to go back. And I could just keep going up this direction, okay? If I felt really good, just so just angle it how you feel. And honestly, just work with in and and go slow. Don't go too fast. Go slow till you get more comfortable with your abilities of quilting. And then, as you do, just go along and make sure that you're securing all of those blocks. Now, I'm going to adjust it. Now, notice what I did. Okay, my needle is not in the down position. I forgot to tell you to put it in the down position. So use your presets to make sure that the needle is set for the down position so that you can move along with the ruler and don't have to stop, okay? So I'm going to go do that right now. I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to make sure the needle stop position is, it's up right now and down, okay? And I'm gonna get out of my settings, and now when I stop, I'm gonna readjust it, okay? Well, hopefully I haven't moved it, okay, too much. And I wanna make sure that my ruler's not sliding in an angle, and I'm just gonna go all the way up to the tip, but I'm gonna take my time. Okay, now turn it off, notice what happens. So now I can reposition my ruler and go down the other way, okay? So, I want you to practice this. I don't want to give you too much. Next week, I'm going to talk about marking the quilt um, and show you different ways to mark it. And let's get involved and let's really learn 
how to rule the rulers. Paulette is asking a question is, what are my settings on the SPI that stitches per inch? I'm in the regulated precise mode, okay, right now. I may change that. We will try all of the modes for quilting in this because we're going to experiment. We're going to learn what works best for us and how we quilt. So right now I'm in regulated precise and I'm at 10 stitches per inch, okay? This is a little faster machine. Some of the machines are a little slower. So 10 stitches per inch or even nine gives me a prettier stitch, I think, okay? If it was up a little higher, the stitches would be closer together. So use what works well for you. That was a great question. Okay, join me next time when we explore marking and learning to use some of the other rulers. I'm very excited about this. So share your work on your ruler progress with the hashtag with T-W-G-M-A-R for March. Okay, I'll see you next time. And make sure you post your questions on Facebook and Instagram at the hashtag T-W-G-Q-A. And please, if you don't get any answers or you need help, I wanna see what you're doing. I wanna see your progress. Or if you're stumped, you guys help me out so much. I wanna help you out. So please contact me, Carla with a K. K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. I'll see you next time, and we're going to get really into ruler work. Bye.